welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm still Angus Dr. Random Mole, and welcome back if you were just with us. Over here in the corner, we have the one, the only, the Frosty. <laughs> and uh, Sibyl can't join us, unfortunately, right now. But that's uh, a professor at play uh, as part of our past at play course. But that doesn't matter because um, uh, I think the two of us will have plenty of... I mean, it does matter that Sibyl is not here because she could have wonderful, wonderful insights into this game. But the two of us, I'm sure, will have plenty of stuff to I'm talk sure about yeah. when it comes to wow. this game. Um Let's just check. I think all the meters are in green. Uh, that's, uh, you can talk. All talk. the meters are in green. Yes. They're, yeah, 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 yeah. They're even in the, the better yellow somehow, right? Yellow is good when it comes to audio. So that does mean yeah. people are able to hear us. Hello, people back home. Or if you watch this later on YouTube. Hello, YouTube people. Future past people. What are we going to be playing, Aris? We are going to be playing Thunderbird Strike. Absolutely. And Thunderbird Strike is an indie game by indie game well by game designer and an all around by, creative by, art person <laughs> yeah I, uh, and scholar not to forget also. assistant professor exactly. uh, in media information writing rhetoric and american cultures at michigan university artist writer researcher and game designer at least, at least what what say. say exactly so um uh, and uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah. You know, let's just play the game. Let's just let's just get in there, uh, in there, and then um, and then and we afterwards them. we'll we'll do a bit of. I think if I all top out of the game, it it pauses. I think. I think so. Uh, it because, does actually, yeah. Because okay, there's good. no pause, or at least no pause that we figured out. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> exactly. So um, let me uh, switch on the sound of that game, uh, which is it has a it has a groovy soundtrack for sure. It's also very loud. It's also pretty loud, yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna not put it too loud. Let's see. Ah, this is this is manageable, right? We have to talk over it a little bit, but uh, all right, there we go. Uh, let's uh, play. So Thunderbird Strike. Uh, let me get our faces. Where should we put our faces, Aris? I mean, now we're in the lightning, right? I think that's good, right? We, we, I we think can, that's we can, fine. We can be on lightning. All right, there you go. But it's, it's a it's a square, so you can put them on. Oh the, yeah, you're right. Absolutely ends. right. Yeah, let me let me just um, let me just uh, play around with it a little bit while we. There we go. That's better. Then we don't overlap too much with the. Uh, where's the other? Where's the other other person? There we go. Yep. All Wait, right. Let me uh, let me bring in my. Laptop from that side, otherwise it looks like I'm looking away all the time. Yeah, you're, you I'm don't you don't want to look me in the eye, right? Yeah. Something yeah, we discussed about the go. placement of of portraits in a stream like this, and and yeah. you, it says something. It says something. All right. Anyways, uh, all right, play. play all right, I'll it. be I'll be sorry. By the way, I have to like mesh my mechanical keyboard quite hard for this yeah. thing to uh, to work. Uh, so you'll be listening to a lot of clicking and clacking as well as uh, as I well as. As well as some groovy music, as I said already. Let us know how are the the levels of the volume, of the sound, music, and if it's too loud. So I'm just gonna play first. Just play a little bit. I can I can explain what's happening. Oops, let me try no, it. you missed it. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I, mi I missed these skeletons the whole time. It makes you me have feel... to be behind the skeletons. Yeah, right, right, right. I yeah, know. you have to be over here. And as you approach, oh, no, no, lower, oh, lower, 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 yeah. even lower. Collect All right. So, oh. no, Dolby and volume could actually be a bit louder. Okay. It'll be a bit louder. All right. Let me alt top out of this if you alt really quickly. Oh, yes. Alt top. Okay. Fortunately, it... Uh... It pauses the game. Okay, all right. Actually. It pauses the game. Then we are going to listen to some... Uh... All right. I think this should be loud enough. If not, right. let us know. All right. So here I am. The, the mythical Thunderbird. Well, mythical. The Thunderbird. The Thunderbird. Exactly. Who's? There's nothing mythical about this because I'm... Uh... Oh, I thought I'm... Oh, yeah, there, 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 there we go. 
Activation, there we go. All right, and as a Thunderbird, sometimes the Thunderbirds need to recharge as well. Give yeah, me, come over here, allies. There you can go. only gather so much storm in you, even as a Thunderbird. So yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, oh, and, and that makes me feel so guilty for mi hitting, not hitting these trucks. Hit so the Aris, truck. Aris, what yes. are these trucks? Can you maybe, while I play, give a bit of while context? While play, let me first lower a bit the stream volume on the Discord, because it's loud for me. <laughs> but. It's pretty loud for me as well, but I'm, I'm digging it now, I'm digging it. Oh wait, I'm forgetting all these all these coyotes. Do the coyotes. Or, yes. So, um, Thunderbird Strike, as we said, is, uh, is this side-scrolling game developed by Elizabeth Levensey, um, where you control the Thunderbird, this uh, legendary creature um, of the indigenous uh, people of North America. Yeah, lots of lots of different uh, lots Native of different, Americans yeah. have lots of the Thunderbird as a figure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And actually, Elizabeth uh, is of Anishinaabe and Métis descent. Yes. Uh, yes. Both of uh, which have the Thunderbird. Um, and Irish, by the way. So and also Irish, Irish, by the way. Um, and what you're doing is you're controlling the Thunderbird and you're trying to destroy uh, the infrastructure for the um, for a pipeline. If you if you if you have been following the news recently or for the past like four years, um, there was this Dakota Access Pipeline or uh, Line Three, if I recall correctly. Um, that would basically bring tar from Canada to the US. Uh, there's a lot more. Oil? Goodness, oil. I'm really yeah. messing this up, Aris. Yeah. <laughs> you keep I can. on talking, I, I, I'm I focusing keep, on my I keep play. On so, um, the creation of this pipeline would go through a large parts of indigenous land, of course, would have to destroy a lot of uh, heritage, uh, literally invade. Uh, native land and it has been met with a lot of protests also known as the Dakota Access Pipeline protests or if you're following on Twitter the hashtag NoDAPL um, sort of a grassroots movement on indigenous rights uh, and as part of this um, as part of this Elizabeth uh, Lapense uh, created this game called Thunderbird Strike uh, to encapsulate the, this movement and it has been met with quite a lot of praise <laughs> from the game development world oh yes that, also, that too that too <laughs> yes. but with quite a bit of scrutiny from the um, industrial world as you can imagine in fact uh, it has even been called a call to eco-terrorism because of the fact that, as you can see, you're the Thunderbird and you're literally destroying all these factories and these trucks, and later on you're also destroying other things like pipelines. Um, and this this more uh, violent on quotes part has attracted quite a bit of media attention. Uh, yeah, I'm just out tubbing out for for quick. So you are tubbing out for a bit. Yes, yeah. So if there's no music anymore. <laughs> That I really dig, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's yeah yeah absolutely. Yeah, thanks for that that uh, that that contextual discussion because it's important. Um, yes, and I think one of the things that I want to point out straight up here is that of course we call this the past at play course, and that in many ways this is a, a well simply a current issue or a contemporary issue. Um, yes, but it is also also isn't because. Uh, as you as was saying, like four years, if you've been following the news from for four years, in fact, you know a bit bit longer already. But the uh, the the protests, yeah, five were, years, were, two, like that. were 2016. So yeah, um, I, I'm still in 2020. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I have the same still problem. in the past. Um, <laughs> but of course, um, these protests themselves are really rooted in 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 heritage and histories from. Uh, from way before and in, and of course the movements that these bigger companies are making are simply reminiscent of the movements uh, and the, the the strategies employed by people that have been colonizing the americas so since the 15th well since the 16th century basically right particularly the claim over territory um, and the in 
the continued uh, pushing out of indigenous people, people that basically were living there before, you know, they, if you would talk to Native Americans, people don't necessarily say they, I mean, every, every single perspective is different. So not every single Native American will say the same thing, but they won't necessarily say that they own the land in that sense, but you know, they were there, they were there before they have a right to exist there. And that right yeah. is continuously being trespassed upon well, more or less continuously since the 15th century, right? In North America, yep. in the um, uh, in, in the Caribbean, and particularly Native uh, Native Americans uh, from the 16th century already onward. So it mm. is rooted in the past yep. from that perspective, from that colonialist perspective and uh, as a protest against it. Um, at the same time, it is also rooted in uh, a rich and strong a culture, uh, a culture's past, and all the well, not only all, also it's present, but all all the symbolisms and you know the 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 thunderbird as a as a as a protector from of, that was already protecting their ancestors is really of course having a very important uh, important role here. You've also played the game real quick, Aris, right? I've played the game, yeah. Yeah, exactly. What so so. Um, uh, just sort of thinking about these general me, me, sort of general affairs, this the aesthetics, if you will, of this game. Mm -hmm. um, yep. What do you think? I think it for just just from the aesthetics perspective, I think it really looks it 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 looks very nice. It, it has um, so the 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 aesthetic. If we if we can already go into that discussion, the general aesthetic has been described as the an indigenous futurism, yeah, um, which is this this movement, this art movement that follows quite a bit the or not follows, but it's inspired by by Afrofuturism and this idea that uh, Afroculture or in this case indigenous perspectives of uh, of the future or of the past or of the present or all of these things combined can be portrayed in a science fiction content, uh, yeah, yeah, science fiction context, not content. Um, and yeah. it's used often as as ways to to alternatively express like traditional stories or talk about contemporary politics. And in this particular case, it does it does both. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> it, exactly. It, it is a it is a science fiction game in many ways, right? Yeah. But it's also a game about you know your heritage and and yeah. your values as a community, and yeah. also about but the contemporary present. politics. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I, I think. And so I, I'm going to say that um, one of the ways that witches can do this is being very active and activist with, yep. the, with the messages of this game, right? Yep. So last week we were playing Civilization, a game that is not active about the messages that it's trying to send, uh, or at least the designers claim they're not active. They claim that it's not active. And yep. uh, So they're not actively engaging with it, quote-unquote. Yep. Um and and you see here the flip side of what happens when you when you do want to have a message. And there's a whole well, maybe Aris, you can uh, link the website of this game as well. When, yes, when, when you do start. have this particular design coming with uh, well, a, a, well, a problem to solve is in fact a, a way of underputting understating it here. But mm -hmm. uh, oh, I should uh, I should get back into the game because if it is actually uh, telling telling you that uh, I'm my, my my stream has ended. <laughs> And that uh, that means you are not visible oh, yeah. anymore. Um, I can't go. see the stream anymore. No, let me let me quickly uh, let me quickly fix this. This is always uh, an annoying. There we go. But that's the way it is. Well, I think I think we're back oh. back on track. Yeah, we're back. On yeah, track. we're back on track. So I'm just gonna. I think we've sort of uh, played. We, this we for... give it the context. Let's let's play another level of this. Exactly. And, uh... Exactly. And we've been staring at my not too good score. I feel really, uh, really bad. But uh... this in between graphics, by the way, are also very nice. Yeah, it's very, it's very both very futuristic and minimalist at the same time, which I really dig. Yeah, and that, that's part of the art, right? So Elizabeth also yeah. made the art for this game. Uh, well, if I can. I, I don't know her personally, so I probably should say Dr. La Pensee made uh, made all the art for for this game. Uh, yeah. Almost all the art. There's some images in there, like for example, the images people are wearing on their 
uh, the posters basically. Oh, I'm not charged up yet. No, kill the, um, kill, the pipes. Kill the pipes. Uh, they are made by other artists. Honestly, I forget the name of those artists, but it's on the website. So um, yeah, right. All right. On the website. So one thing that I want to point out when it comes to the aesthetics of this game that we didn't necessarily uh, discuss just now mm -hmm. is the the game the gamey aesthetics of it. So every yeah. time that you sort of hit something, or often when you hit something, it will say "Fatal Strike." Mm -hmm. Or that is very Mortal Kombat, isn't it? It is very Mortal Kombat. The first time I heard about this, I was like, "Whoa!" I would, I did not expect this. Like, uh, no, exactly. And it's 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 commentary too, right? Yeah. It Here is... you get also this extra power, by the way, of the tornado. Yeah. Can you read uh, Vice comment yes, for me while I? Vice uh... says, "Industries literally colonize indigenous lands, creating harm to the environment as a whole." I feel like a game where you get to embody the Thunderbird and strike back is cathartic and the violence on quotes in it is justified. The violent actors are the industries. Yeah, exactly. Yes. exactly. I mean, I mean, uh, there's there can be violence from both sides, right? Um, yeah. But, uh, but often we, you know, uh, polite civil debate, it, it doesn't really... Just doesn't do the trick, you know? Doesn't scope, but it doesn't scope the, the, the things that is happening yeah. Here by the government, uh, especially yeah. under the Trump government, no. um, but also before uh, Obama's government was also already giving uh, access to, I mean, these, uh, to these lands. Yeah. So to, um, to give a bit more political context, there was some like moderation during the Obama administration about requiring basically more paperwork on this, but it was not by no means a, a done deal that they would stop it. Of course, they they would very much continue with its construction. But then, of course, with the Trump administration, it, they just sped up the construction of it, despite. Yeah, and we should also point out that there are pipelines already. Pipeline number three, if I uh, remember correctly, um, there's already pipelines there in the landscape. Yes. And they just want more of them. In no, pipeline th line three is the uh, is is a, I don't think it's it has been completed. I think it's. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah. Anyway, they have different n uh, names, but also different numbers. Yeah. And uh, and one of them has been in operation since the 50s. Yeah. And was only supposed to be operational until 2003. Um, and um, is still operational now, still pumping huge amounts of oil through aging infrastructure. Yeah. Um, not only to the places where it uh, should be, but also to indigenous communities, but also just all the communities along that pipeline that are making use of particularly the waterways that connect, uh, that, that are in the area, right? Because yeah. uh, Flint, Michigan is a good example. You've probably heard the name uh, now and again if you uh, stay on top of current affairs. It's another example where uh, water sources have been really polluted thanks to, um, well, industrial moving <laughs> movements yeah. in, in that area, right? Yeah. So um, it's not only an indigenous sort of issue, <laughs> but although it is very much is, because, very you know, much, uh, it, yeah. The but it's, a, it's it's also an environmental issue, and that's also part of the. If you follow the the movements that have been created, all these grassroots initiatives, um, and the activism that has followed this. On one hand, it is about indigenous rights, and it's very much about indigenous rights. But that does. But they. But it is also about climate. It's also about water, because of course, and that's one of the main arguments is that no pipeline ever will not have any spills there is simply no there is simply no way that you can create these pipelines without affecting heavily affecting the climate yeah absolutely there's there's no way that you can do that but uh, of course i mean uh, the, uh, a lot of this is now sort of is now under review and the construction has passed which uh, the the response to that has been a lot of jobs are being lost uh, of people working on that pipeline. Yeah. So um, I, I know that, you know, my I know what side of the debate I'm on. <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, you also have to understand that, of course, with this economic activity comes opportunities for uh, otherwise uh, communities that are otherwise, you know, uh, don't have a lot of labor available to them, as well as, of course, large scale uh, financial profits for, um, for uh, people, uh, well, 
yeah, people and companies. Uh, yeah. At, at at the receiving end of that flow of oil, basically. Um, but uh, briefly about um, about this game's uh, mechanics, Aris. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna make sure that I uh, alt up now and again. Um, yeah. So what do you think about? I mean, to be to be very clear, this is an indie game that was made by one person, so it's clearly not some sort of super smooth. Uh, like <laughs> 3D shooter, quote unquote. But what do you think about the mechanics? Sort of the, the the game design choices that are being made here. I think there are some very interesting design choices. So yeah, the gameplay itself has its own little issues, which I I think it's besides the point. Like whether yeah. the skeleton is activated or not, and where you have to stand to activate the skeleton to to active, to, to basically re- rebirth the the animal and so on. That is, or or what happens on sometimes you don't kill it, you don't kill like a factory. Do you still get the points? It's not very clear when you when it like flickers. Um, but whatever, all of this I think is besides the point. I think the there are a lot of choices in there that are very important. One choice is that you have to recharge, and I feel like there is a lot of meaning placed into it. The fact that the Thunderbird is not ever av- available to. Uh, to 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 help, but it needs to recharge. It needs the nature, yeah. and without nature, the Thunderbird can't do anything. So I think there's a lot of meaning placed in it. I yeah, really like. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, I, yeah. It's, it's the the recharging mechanic is one of the. I mean, games can be very simple in many ways, right? Yeah. Uh, and still, they can be. They can give complex gameplay. So the the recharging yeah. mechanic is. Yeah. Um, I'm just alt tabbing now and again to make sure that we stay in uh, <laughs> in, in, in view. Uh, is really is really critical, and I like the way that you have to basically. It, it's a choice. It's a, an interesting ch- thing that you have to decide in the moment whether yeah. you're gonna try and hang out there low a little bit still, uh, or yeah. have to fly up back back up there. And it really is. Yeah. I'm sh- I'm sure it's a choice as well for people that are active in their communities, protecting them right now and protesting yeah. that. Sometimes you just have to recharge. You cannot always fight the fight, right? That's to yeah. me what this. I mean, this yeah. is just me reading intentions into this. I'm not saying that this yeah. is the, the the meaning of the game designer. No, this, this is our own close the, reading of the game. Exactly. This is what it what I experienced. Like, oh man, I wish I could just be there, blasting lightning, yeah, and all these things, uh, but I cannot because I have to recharge. And at the same time, that's why it's interesting that there's mm. in the middle of the screen. So this becomes a very detailed analysis of the yeah. gameplay. There's your allies running around, yes. right? People with signs or uh, uh, deer uh, in, in the uh, sand, uh, centaur planes. It's also an interesting, uh, interesting thing. Anything else that sort of pops out to you, Aras, when you're uh, when you're when we're I playing mean, this? I think the, the the whole. I like also the, the semantics of the animals and the protesters and how they help recharge Thunderbird, right? Yeah. So you yeah, yeah. you go over them and and you recharge, and I think this is a very powerful message. That that it, it puts like all these protests into an active perspective. That it's not moot. It's it's actually helping. Like you should keep doing this because this is what he- recharges the Thunderbird. You know, yeah. it can lay, it can lay low and fight with you. So I think that's very important. I really like the 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 the, the positive aspect of it with the recharging the, the reviving the animals. That if you're like, it's not only, and that's one of the criticisms that, that came through, and that's one of Elizabeth's response when when the game was accused of promoting eco terrorism. Quotes um, that all these all these media that that showed the game showed the destruction of the um, the destruction of the, the pipes and the destruction of factors, but they didn't show the reviving aspect of it. No, that exactly. actually, by removing this, you, you're helping nature. So there is a very a very activist message, but also a very positive message yeah. into the game. Yeah, and one of the things that I also think is interesting here, when it comes to gameplay, is that you cannot always, uh, but more or less, you cannot do everything. And also, you cannot even even the mighty Thunderbird, you know, cannot do it. It's I mean, I'm sure that's players that have sort of do a lot better than I do, but you can simply not almost really not do everything. No, and, I don't think it's possible. And uh, particularly, you have to make a choice sometimes, which is, I think, a choice that people will have to make on the ground there as well, is by by you know, reactivating 
or destroying, right? Yeah. There's the reactivation of things. Mm -hmm. And if you basically, if you only reactivate, you're never going to get a, a super good high score. Or when you only, um, when you, you only know, destroy, destroy, also not going to be a high score. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, the only thing that I think is, you know, um, it's interesting that there's still a score at the end. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm I'm sort of like all against that, but I I sort of wonder what it, I don't, it doesn't really do anything for me. Interestingly enough. No, I mean, what it does is it provides the reflection of it. It can provide the reflection of your choices, so you can eventually like you can piece together if you're choosing to revive more, right, in the first level, or yeah. to destroy more. It it puts into perspective your high score versus the 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 path that you took. Yeah. It doesn't seem that there is like if you only destroy for example, there doesn't seem to be a negative output, but you're simply just not going to get enough score or a high score for that matter. Um but it helps you see what you've done really. I think because maybe it would you wouldn't need the high score, you it could just simply be the two layers like what you helped and and what you destroyed. As a visual presentation with yeah exactly I, I, it. Think, I think um, you know but I think if you don't have the high score then you don't know what is what does what it means yeah as gamers and that's the interesting thing right yeah. so that's 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 also where this medium takes it's not a criticism necessarily of games it's almost like a, a love story of uh, quote unquote simple nineties eighties arcade games right yeah that is like yeah, you know sure. this is what it just means to uh, I think. Oh, this is uh, interesting as well. A little bit of yes. a new mechanic. Yeah, here we have a different mechanic. With, um, or I sort of have to. Um... So basically, you see the it's, it's the pollution meter at the top, right? Yes, exactly. And you have to be collecting all the things to maintain the bar, the pollution bar low. And the, the snake is quite obviously presenting. Yeah, exactly. Oh, hey, Chila, Chila on the stream. Hey, oh, nice, uh, nice. Uh, come over yeah, here. Pick it up, pick it up. Uh, yeah, you also have to um, can shoot at the snake. Yeah, you can. And you should shoot at the snake. Yeah, exactly. Like at little plot spots like this, I think uh, is it has generally been a little bit... I'm not entirely super, super sure what what's what's going on oh, here. Where to hit? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think you have to hit, but you don't have... Yeah, I think you have to hit it where it, where it spills. Yeah, I think so too. And that's interesting. This is a snake. Um, yeah. There's also uh, a mythological component to it. Absolutely, the snake is um, one of those um, uh, one of those creatures that is said to be fought, uh, that that the Thunderbird is fighting against. Basically, uh, I don't know. sometimes it, this this part of it sort of I could have yeah, had so a little bit more guidance here as as a player. Yeah, so the, the thing is that that's one of the things that it's it's not very it's, it it doesn't become immediately intuitive. On the other hand, I have never lost. <laughs> so no, and you know that's what I really like about this game as well that it's sort of the idea of l loss is is just completely completely done. <laughs> it's there's no yeah. there's no loss here. So maybe I just wanna maybe this is something I can try and spam. No, I don't think I can. No, spend. it doesn't do. It. You need to. You really need to just hit it where it spills. That's, yeah, exactly. That's how you do yeah. damage. Come here, you. Come here, spill. Well, don't spill actually, but. Oh yeah, I think I hit it a couple of good times there. All right, I'm gathering lightning. Spill again. Spill again. Spill. I'm not sure if you hit it now. Yeah, I'm also. That's this is really where uh, I'm electrified, so that's good. There you go. Now you did some serious damage. Yes, now there are some serious damage there. Now I'm gonna electrify some more. Come on, you. Yeah, there, there we go. go. I think I'm not actually. I don't think I have to uh, get the coal from the from the snake. I think it's just meant to sort of. Uh, Prevent me from reaching its uh, its uh, softer softer areas, basically, because it uh, depletes. <laughs> what do you mean, instructional voice? <laughs> no, I, my, you, we know what we're doing. We know that we have to collect lightning in the clouds. Yes, we're that will definitely. The third level. 
<laughs> this is not the first time we're doing uh, this. Chill has mansplaining this to us. <laughs> there kidding. you go. Boom! There we go. In the game. In the game. I, also, bro. Chilla and I not have a, a a good no, not not very great. <laughs> Let me. And much beautiful graphics, though. What can I say? TP ring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It really works. That's the the Turtle Island. That's the metaphor for well, not the metaphor. Yeah. That's the. That is North America as a as a concept in some some indigenous yeah. Yeah. belief systems. All right. Yeah, Gather lightning. Is. I would be thinking lightning. about this whole day. Yeah, it is. It is very much. I'm just gonna. That's a very short game. And yeah, it is a little bit short game, but I think it 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 it. Oh, Puts it's... the message across. Ab absolutely, absolutely. So there was some, it is not entirely self made. There was programming by Adrian Cheater, a nice name, uh, Aubrey, Aubrey Jane Scott. Um, um, but it's a short game, but it, some games don't have to be long to put their point across, right? No, exactly. Um, uh, and this sometimes. Is yeah, this is something we discussed a little bit also when we were doing the, the Culture Arcade exhibition, where we had games from. Uh, related to cultural heritage from around the world. Yeah. And oftentimes this type of, in these settings as well, often these type of games, the shorter games, the one that really focus on, on what they want to say and, and try and actively just do that for a moment and have you let it sink in afterwards. Yeah, I think they really work in that sense. The, the, the you know, size doesn't matter in this case. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sure house. but no in fact in fact you could say it, it's kind of the other way around as well that exactly yeah. it's um uh, i'm just gonna run through uh elizabeth's collected works and no, i'm not gonna run through it because we were thinking maybe we could play another game but at the same time we could only play it for five minutes so it's not really gonna work yeah. out um but i just wanted to highlight some of the other uh games that elizabeth has i mean check mm -hmm. out the website elizabeth and and yeah. and the rest of the works there's comics there there's emergent media including virtual reality in there animations art lots of very neat stuff i'm gonna say mm -hmm. and, but the games in particular are interesting to check out so if you want to play uh other games by her uh where she well then uh when rivers were trails is especially if you're into twines and things like that then this is a nice game to uh, to check out um I haven't played dialect, but I was thinking, ah, so wait, you, ah, this is, uh, is this... am I not here? Yeah, you're, you're, you're not entirely here because I've, uh, uh, you've removed me. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, removed you've removed you me from so the, you're, you're, that's you're, totally fine. Nah, let me, let me try, let me try to get you back up there again. There we go. Uh, I'm like, what? And now, can I, now uh, I have to get rid of, there we go. Uh, there we go. And that I completely just. Destroy the destroy Chrome now. I guess I did, right? Oh dear. Um, oh dear. Oh dear. I'm trying to make a point here, and then having to uh, let me just let me just add it again um, because I put I simply put it in one of the not active groups. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. You go down all the way. There we go. Um, that's that. Um. Uh, so I, we, I think we should be uh, we should be uh, maybe uh, streaming dialect at some point. Uh, so what do you yeah, think? we could, we could of course. I, I, think, I think it's also relatively short. It could be. I, as I said, I haven't I haven't played it yet, but uh, yeah. But it could in fact be. Um, it could be because I haven't checked it out. Just only this it could be that it's just a, a board game, not just a board yeah. game. It's not a. So we have to see. We'll have so, to check it out. One thing that I, I I sort of realized when I was looking back at this that. I've I've seen Elizabeth names not only in this context but also in where the water tastes like wine. Yeah, she was one of the guest writers. Yeah, for one of the stories. Yeah. Beautiful game, by the way. Also play that. Yeah, uh, beautiful. And um, we have a book coming up, right? The interactive. We have return, a book coming back. Return to the interactive past, where the head developer of where the water tastes like wine, uh, uh, 
John has a Nordhagen. chapter in there. Has a chapter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. John Nordhagen has a chapter in there. So there's all sorts of interesting, relatively small games. In fact, many of yep. them are there for free, which is yep. something that you'll often see. But I think that, I don't know if Elizabeth actually has a, like a way that you can donate. Not that you need to, but you know, free doesn't always mean that people don't want to be compensated in other means. Um you can find the of... website over here and put yeah. it down in the chat. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that I think I want to sort of end with uh, is play a little bit of Invaders, which okay. I think is another... Do, do play a little bit of Invaders, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's another, it's another really bit. classic take on... Uh, yeah. Game classic take on, on, on basically the idea of, well, in this case, colonialism, right? Yeah. Let me full screen this and let me... Um, on the topic of short games that get the message across very well in a similar fashion as the Thunderbird Strike, you can check stuff like Lila and the Shadows of War or Path Out. On a yeah. different topic on war this time, but uh, they, they, they achieve their, their means in the same way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. All right, let's play some invaders. Or let's play against some invaders. Let me full screen this, in fact. It's a bit easier when you full screen it. So, of course, this is Space Invaders. This is basically Space Invaders. And it's a, it's a, it's a hack or a reskin, is, is, you call this in game development. Oops. Yeah. Oh, there we already have it. Oh, man. I'm, oh, I'm, Not... I'm, I'm messing up so badly. Normally, I got to wave five in my previous couple of counts. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at it from the screen because it's not shared with me, of course. Yeah. And it's, I say it will be late. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but, uh, and then of course, uh, so what just happened when I was just messing up horribly, uh, you said it, my extra lives were represented by, and I once again forgot the name of the um, um, of the artist, but this is a, a sort of an, a, known, uh, a known work of art made into this, this game. Yeah. Um, and what happened, the rest of the people that were on this, uh, well, my people around me, uh, where, well, disappeared as I was losing lives, right? So, and yeah. and of course the idea is, uh, as Elizabeth has discussed in her come up, a couple of her interviews, is that we we are fighting against nameless and faceless invaders in a way, right? People that like it doesn't really matter what the invaders are. The mechanics are the same. They are relentless. They'll keep on going, and you, you're just there. And that's of course an interesting mechanic in in a game like uh, like like Space Invaders, original one, is that. You know, you would be playing this game endlessly. There would you would always lose at some point against the invaders from space. Or in this case, against the invaders from well, still space, but I guess they're meant to represent some other form of uh, invaders. We we'll put in the Stephen Paul Jude is the artist. Ah, thanks. Oh, oh, and I, I put oh. the Instagram account in chat as well. Sadly, yeah, we sadly, did. Sadly, sadly, we did. We lost. We, we lost against it. the invaders, <laughs> but uh, I think that um, that uh, shows. I also haven't managed to take this game too far, to be honest. <laughs> it's 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 space invaders. It can be pretty pretty hard. Uh, it can so, be pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, it can be pretty hard. Oh, and uh, and you're of course uh, now uh, dropped away completely because I'm not sharing any games with you anymore. So uh, yeah, the, the the sadness of uh, let me let me just share you with you one more time. Uh, uh, Thunder, you know what I'm gonna share? I'm gonna share my uh, just my my browser with you, so at least you're at least you're there while we wrap there, while we wrap up. Yeah, there we go. I think we're wrapping up right now. One of the few times that we complete a game in uh, in a stream. <laughs> that never happens, uh, but, uh, but but sometimes it does. I guess um, I guess it happened before with Hamurabi. <laughs> Several times with Hamurabi. Several in fact. times. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which, by the way, I'll be, um, if you're interested, I'll be talking about that. Maybe Alex will join me as well. Who knows? Um, uh, tomorrow afternoon at a quarter past three here at twitch.tv slash FMD. I'm going to go through Hammurabi for my Exploring the Past course, where we're talking about games as models of the past. So it's very much like uh, the course that we're doing now, except that we're really uh, focusing in quite a bit on, on how thinking through and making games fits in with other models of the past that we have uh, through other media, but also through things like agent-based modeling 
So that's a slightly different slant, but uh, we'll be playing Hammurabi uh, uh, as part of that tomorrow. So maybe maybe I was like, oh, I want to join. Otherwise, I, I sort of I think I can sort of. I just to beat our. All right. I'm yeah. pitching Assyrian archaeology. Assyrian archaeology. Not the same. So, yeah. Right. But I won't be streaming Assyrian archaeology. No. So well, you should be doing that though at some point. Maybe I should be doing that at some um, point. Anyway, I guess uh, that this is it from uh, from us. Thanks for joining, as always, and we will see you next week. Lots of fun with um, playing uh, other people's games, as well as Harold, uh, yeah. which we'll uh, we'll talk to, to the designer of that next week. So um, that's it, right? Uh, also from on behalf of Sabil as well, of course. Uh, yes. We hope you stay happy and healthy. Bye.